Deborah, and welcome to my channel, Stitch the Stash. Today is Saturday, July 6th, and I'm here with you today to bring you my StitchCon 29 recap, a special edition video. Um, as you can see, I'm proudly wearing one of my apparel purchases or spirit wear purchases. I'm wearing my uh, StitchCon 2019 t-shirt. I did also purchase two other items of apparel. One is a long, long sleeve t-shirt and another one is a zip up hoodie, which I wore that all weekend long. Um, love it. So like I said, I went to StitchCon and I told everyone that I would give my thoughts and opinions about how it was because this was my very first retreat and this was a very large stitching retreat with 400 attendees, which is a lot. So I thought I would go ahead and um, share my experiences with you, especially since I do, I am very much of an introvert. I do suffer from some anxiety when it comes to getting together in large groups of individuals, especially with individuals I do not know. Um, but I can just tell you after spending three full days there, my heart was full and overflowing by the time I left. It was a fantastic experience. And um, I highly encourage anyone who is questioning whether or not they would like to attend StitchCon, especially if they think that it's too many people, um, they're, they're too shy, um, I'm here to tell you, get on the wait list. It is an experience that you will never forget. So let me go ahead and get started with, um, I think I'm going to go uh, day by day and I will insert pictures as I talk about things and I do have a, a video of the brag table to insert. So um, as I talk about things, I'll insert them and then I'll probably at the end I will have um, a slideshow of um, extra pictures that I took. Um, so yes. I flew in first thing Thursday morning. Um, Carmen Broadway Stitcher, both her and I had the exact same flight. We were on a teeny tiny plane. We landed in Cincinnati, CVG, um, on time. Once we landed in the airport in Cincinnati, we got an Uber and headed over to the Hyatt Hotel where we were both staying. Um, so we probably got there maybe right at noon, maybe a little bit before. Um, we were waiting to get an early check-in, which the hotel was able to accommodate us. So we just hung out for a little bit because we didn't want to rush over to the convention center, which was just connected by a runway um, where everyone was lining up to go through registration or um, the greeting line where they got where we received everything um, for the event um, prior to going into the huge, huge stitching room. Um, so we waited a little bit and when we decided we were ready to walk over, um, who did we run into? But we ran into Debbie from Snug Harbor Crafts and we um, had a great time even before we got on the line. It was so wonderful to meet her. Um, we took pictures together. We took pictures of the long line that we uh, waited in to get in. And actually it moved rather quickly for how long it looked. Um, but we just had a wonderful time talking with everybody in line while we waited to get up to the front in order to get our package, our StitchCon um, goodies and our packages and our name tags. Um, it was just wonderful. So I approached the podium where Stephanie was standing, where she was handing out your initial um, packet with your name on it. And I was getting ready to tell her who I was. And she looked at me, she goes, I know who you are. And I was like, you do? Which I'm shocked because um, I'm just a little little channel. I'm, most people do not know who I am. I am a fairly new floss tuber. For her to know who I am I was pretty impressed, especially since I was um, got off the waiting list really late. And just because you know she said, I know who you are, um, makes you feel a little extra special. So she handed everybody their um, 
packets that had the itineraries in it, had your name badge in it, and then you moved on to Pam. She gave you a, a, your little Stitch Con retreat bag, and then you moved down to Nicole Buckeye Stitcher, where she hands you a few little goodies in the bag, and I'm just standing there as I go down the line just just fangirling and um she was extremely sweet she was like well do you want to put this stuff in your in in your uh, retreat bag so you don't lose it i'm like yes please and then after you speak with her you go down to sue hillis and she is the most adorable cute classy lady um I adore her, I love her patterns. Um, and what you did with her is if you were participating in the Smalls Exchange, she had a bag that you put your hand in and you pulled out a colored chip. And because there were so many individuals um, who were attending, there were four separate Smalls Exchange. And I pulled out red, and so that meant my exchange happened on Saturday afternoon. All right, so then once you get through the line and you're, you're done fangirling for a moment, um, I stepped over and picked up my spirit wear because I ordered it in the last round and everything was shipped to keepsakes. Then you walked into the stitchy room. And I say we probably stepped into the stitching room 1 o'clock, 1.15, I don't know. But what amazed me was not just everything, what everything, how everything was set up, was that there already were women sitting at their tables stitching away. I was amazed, and in my opinion, I labeled those individuals as retreat um, professionals, that they come in, they get set up, and they start stitching right away, and I was really impressed. Once I got over that amazement, we found a table, we ended up going towards the back of the room, Debbie from Snug Harbor Crafts sat with us, and then Corinna from Stitching Haven came up to us and asked if she could sit down, and then we had two lovely ladies Bev and Kathy, um, they live in upstate New York, and they sat down with us, and we had a fabulous weekend together. You couldn't, you couldn't go wrong with what table you chose to sit at, and um, I think we had a pretty fantastic table. All right, so then what happened? Because this is probably around 1, 1.30. We got settled at our table, and I can honestly say that I do not think I put one stitch in on Thursday. Um, we were in the room from, say, 1 o'clock until 10 o'clock at night. For me, I was just up from the table. I walked up to the freebie table, um, which you, you went to that several times throughout the weekend because there was always new items showing up. Um, you walked to the brag table and you kept going to that multiple times because as people showed up, more and more were placed on the tables. I did not bring anything for the brag table um, simply because I was flying and I have limited uh, FFO pieces and I probably could have brought um, my always you piece because um, it's it's small but I didn't think to do it um, I was up to the last minute of um, packing and everything the night before my flight and I just completely blanked as is I did leave a couple things at home but that's okay so I was up down up down um, throughout the afternoon walking around checking things out seeing who's sitting at what tables seeing if I recognized anybody um, and then around mm, 7 o'clock, I'm trying to think if they opened up the shopping annex prior to the 7 o'clock greeting um, or I know they were delayed because they had about 20 trunk shows to set up. And uh, so they were a little delayed in letting us in. It was just a preview only um, so we could see what was in there. And then the shopping um, was available to us at 8 30 Friday morning. Did get the sneak peek of that and everything in there was amazing. I did not take a lot of pictures. I only took pictures of one um, setup which was Misty Purcell's Luminous Fiber Arts uh, display. Um, I just didn't have the opportunity to go back in there and take a lot of pictures when there was um, no one in there because there was usually always someone in there 
um, there. So I believe the annex opened up three times throughout the day and you just, it was crazy. Um, so we had the preview of that. I made mental notes of things that I wanted to purchase when the store opened the next day. Um, so at seven o'clock um, was basically the welcoming and um, Barbara, Barbara and her team welcomed all of us. There was little speeches. Um, they had a surprise for us that uh, this year they provided a stitchy bus they purchased um, an old school bus and they uh, revamped it and painted it and is now called the Stitchy Bus. And that was the shuttle that ran all weekend between the convention center, between La Quinta Hotel and Keepsakes all weekend. And that was so much fun. And um, kudos to Brian who drove it all weekend. Uh, he put up with all of us stitchers in the heat because it did not have air condition um he was amazing and um a lot of fun um i i remember one time i got out of the bus and he puts the phone up and says everyone smile and wave for a picture and it was a lot of fun very memorable after barbara gave a speech um uh, Stephanie gave hers. I told her later when I was able to speak with her that I thought she was very good with words and that um, she really, really knew how to touch my heart personally. And um, she's a pretty special girl. So um, I was glad I had one opportunity to speak with her for a few minutes and tell her that. Um, but yes, after the welcoming and um, we were free to stitch and mingle and by this point almost everyone is in the room. There were some um, uh, people who were arriving on Friday. Um, but yeah, pretty much the room was pretty full. And I did take pictures um, in the back of the room and uh, so you could get a perspective of what 400 stitchers look like in this room and um, it was pretty amazing and impressive. All right, so let me go ahead and show you what we received upon arriving and going through the reception line. We received these gorgeous StitchCon canvas totes. They are amazing. And they have little pockets on the outside. There's a pocket right here. And then what was inside? What was inside is this 2019 StitchCon journal. It is really, really nice. We also had, um, we received our 2019 passports, and what is in here is everyone who attended that was a floss tuber were asked to give a trivia question about your channel. And then that question is placed in this book. And what it is, it's basically to get everyone to go around and try to find out who was who in this book. And as a floss tuber, I also received stickers. All right, so as people came up to you and they found you in the book, you would then put a sticker on your spot in the book. So we received this, and I think it's, a, it's actually an excellent tool um, to get people to mingle. And I was impressed with the people who did their homework because, like I said, my channel is no, I'm really no, I'm not a big name. Hardly anyone knows me. And the people that did their homework. They went through and they wrote who was who on each one. And um, I, I told one, one lady that I was very impressed um, with her doing her homework um, because, you know, you know, there was like 90 floss tubers there. So that was a, that was a lot of um, looking at channels and trying to place who was with who. So this was a really great idea for getting everyone to mingle and get to know each other. We had this... Ohio ornaments in there with this heart marking Cincinnati, really sweet. This little goodie, it's Aunt Sally's creamy pralines. I have not eaten mine yet, um, but it will. We had uh, received an envelope with our itinerary, our itineraries in there. There's a handful of patterns that were given to us um, in here. It's well-known designers and um, was very, very generous. And 
I, I want to stitch them all. That is for sure. Oops. And, pardon me, our name tags. We all received our name tags. And if you're a floss tuber, your floss tube channel name is listed. If you are not a floss tuber, then you had a heart on the top of your, a cross stitch heart on top of your, um, badge and then your name and then everyone's where they're from it was listed so that was really cool all right so that was everything in my bag all right so on thursday like i said when we were in line waiting to get in we met debbie from snug Harderberg crafts um and then later on in the day i met linda blue horse yellow cow um was so excited to meet her she is just as adorable in person as she is in her videos then i ran into abby top knot stitcher took a picture with her was excited to meet her um she's definitely got the better top knot than me but uh, you know she's adorable and then later on in the evening, I turned around and I ran into Rachel. She is fantasy stitches here on Floss Tube. And um, I knew she'd be arriving a little bit later because she was driving um, down to Cincinnati after work. But I didn't realize that she was sitting in the table right next to mine behind me. So when I turned around to get up and um, I believe maybe go read for my water, I turned and there she was. So I was super, super excited to meet her. That is basically Thursday. Friday happens and I get up, I have this wonderful breakfast and head on down to the stitchy room. I get there probably just before no, just after 8.30 because the um, shopping annex opened at 8.30. So I went into the stitching room, dropped off my stuff, and went straight into the um, shopping annex. And when I walked in, there was only two people in line to pay. A lot of shoppers were in there. Um, so I made my rounds to uh, pick up the things that I knew I definitely wanted to get while I was there. So I picked them up and then lo and behold, when I stepped uh, to, over to the cash register, the line was going out the door and down the hall. I probably stood in the pay line for an hour and a half. Um, and that's okay because you know what? You talked with everyone who was standing in line with you and got to know everybody a little bit better. So it was a great opportunity to meet people. It was a great opportunity to, to speak with everyone. All right, so what did I purchase in the shopping annex on day one? Okay, this is what I got. And Garon Toten Bags was there. And I scoped it out the night before. And I found probably like three or four that I really wanted. But I decided that I would just pick up one to begin with. Because I, I picked my favorite and I, that way I knew I, I was going to take it home with me. And this is the bag that I brought home. Are we surprised? It's pink. It's gorgeous. It is gorgeous flowers. There are butterflies on there. I absolutely love it. It's got a nice Velcro, strong Velcro closure, and then it has this really pretty pink doodly hearts inside. And this is a nice big bag. And I think it's a 12 inch by 18 inch. I don't have anything this size. Um, but the funny thing was, is when I was in the shopping annex, um, doing looking at the preview, um, I was with Rachel and she told me, well, you have to get one of these bags because you need it to put, to store everything that you're going to purchase this weekend in. And I'm like, okay, I'm sold. So yeah, I got this one. Absolutely love it. All right. Then I headed over, um, Color and Cotton was having a trunk show there. And you guys know I love Color and Cotton fabrics and threads. I'm part of her monthly clubs. But of course, you know, when you get to see it in person, there's always something you're going to find that you want. And I had picked out four or five different fabrics the night before that I wanted, and I came home with one. And this is it. This is a 32 count Lugana, and it is the color South Beach. And um, the color, of course, is not accurate on screen. It is. It reminds me of the Caribbean Ocean. Love it. So that came home with me. All right, then Tellum Emblem was having a trunk show there, and 
I had the opportunity to to speak with her. Um, I ran into her on Thursday night at the freebie table. Um, she asked me a question. I answered it, and then I looked at her name badge, and I was like, oh, my gosh, you're the designer Tell Them Emblem. I love your patterns. And she was just so cute and such a delight to speak with, and I'm sad that I didn't get a picture with her. I ran into her probably, like, four times the whole entire weekend, and each time we had a conversation, and um, my brain wasn't working because there's a lot of pictures I didn't get to take. But this is the pattern. She had several on display. They were all gorgeous. I could have come home with all of them, but I picked my favorite, and I brought home this one. And it is called, it's her Still Life Sampler, and it's called Dahlia. And I went with this because of the gorgeous, you know, red flowers. And then there's a B on there. And I love what it says. A, B, C, one, two, three. My needle is a friend to me. Absolutely gorgeous. So I picked this up. Okay. And then I worked my way over to Under the Sea Fabrics where there was a mad house. Leslie, um was in attendance at StitchCon this year, and I did have the opportunity to speak with her and meet with her. Um, her fabric is stunning. I am so thrilled to get to see a lot of different colors in person. Um, again, what you see on your computer screen, nine times out of 10 is not going to be what you're gonna receive. And being able to look at everything and touch everything in person really helps you decide what you really like and that you could order in the future. So I originally picked up um, this really gorgeous green fabric and then I held on to it and I worked my way down the line and I found another fabric that I had spotted the night before and it was still sitting on the table. So I picked that up and I put the green fabric back. And I came home with a fat quarter of, it is a th uh, 28 count Lugana and it's in the color Vampiric. And it is this gorgeous, stunning pinks reds purples it's absolutely beautiful and of course it's a little bit more washed out on screen it's deeper in person but i love it 310 had her own trunk show and 310 is the gorgeous black kitty that is the resident kitty in keepsakes and sadly we did not see her while we were there um, from what i understand is she doesn't like a lot of people and let me tell you every time you know i went to keepsakes twice and a lot of people i'd be running and hiding in the basement too so we didn't get to see her however i did come home with a couple items from her trunk show and the first item I picked up was this cute, adorable ruler. Yep. Yes, please. And then I came home with this cute 310 thread keep. Love it. I won't use it as the thread keep. It will be on display, but it's adorable. Okay. So that is all I came home with on um, shopping in the Annex. Um, I wanted to get more. I wanted to go back in, um, but every time it opened, there was always a mad rush, and then there was long lines to pay, and um, I went back in one other time, and I I told myself, okay, I'll come back in later and get what I get a couple more items, and it didn't happen because I was having way too much fun. Oh, and there's a couple of freebie patterns. I have the freebie pattern of 310 to actually stitch her, adorable, and then I picked up a freebie pattern from Needle Bling Designs. It's called Be Different. So I picked that up in there too. Let's talk about the freebie table. I did not get any pictures of it. Um, however, I did um, go up to it throughout the weekend and each time I found a couple of items that I said had to come home with me. All right, so what did I get? Oh, I found something else that was in our gift bag, our stitch comb bags. We were all given um, a raise the roof designs um, cross stitch pattern and they were random. Not everyone got the same um, pattern, but I love this one because it's Helga Hag's beauty bag. And I know someone who's stitching this, can't remember who, and when I saw it, I'm like, I would like this pattern. And guess what, guys? I got it in my bag. So that was included in our little 
welcome totes. All right, so what did I get off the freebie table? I found this Banked Creek leaf. It screams Thanksgiving, it screams autumn, it screams fall, it screams, yes, I can be up all through the uh, winter, fall season, so I picked that up. I found this Shepherd's Bush pattern. It's called Lamb. And look, it comes with all of the buttons to go on it. But I fell in love with it because I'm also a knitter and that lamb is adorable and the ball of yarn is adorable. So I picked that one up off the freebie table. I also picked up, this is Martha Henson's Cattails. They're so cute. And then I found this free kit. Well, of everything on the table is free, but I'm reading it because it says free kit. It is a kit. It came from inside the world of cross stitching, and it is called Fizzy Moon with Love. Isn't that adorable? I said, yes, please. It comes with everything, all the stuffs, right? I showed the chart. Um, then I found in my adventures, it's a heart and hand, and it's called We Garden Gate. And I tell you what, guys, I forgot to mention that when you checked on the annex on the first day, Barbara was running the register, and who was helping her? Cecilia Turner. And she is so sweet. And it's funny because she noticed that all of my purchases were color coordinated except for that South Beach blue fabric. And she told me, we'll just put it in the center and we'll, no one will ever know that it is a different color other than the pink. She's a sweetheart. Um, I'm really sad. I wanted to bring the pattern um, of Always You with me to have her sign it. And I, that's something I forgot um, because, you know, when I put it on Instagram, she did give me words of encouragement of doing those road stitches. So I, oh, well, next year, right? All right. And then on another one of my trips, I found this Mill Hill kit. It is the Autumn Harvest and it's called Hootie. And it's an adorable um, owl. And it's a full kit. Hasn't been used. And then I found on one of my last trips to the uh, freebie table, it's called a Vintage Rose Brooch Kit. Everything is in it to make this as a, a, bro as a brooch, but I'm not going to. Um, I will stitch everything up, but um, I'm not going to wear it. But it's just too cute to have left it on the table. So that came home with me. So that's everything I got off the freebie table. So I wanted to talk about some of the highlights um, I experienced on uh, Friday before I go into my first keepsakes purchases on Friday. Because I went on Friday and I went again on Saturday. Um, some of my highlights were um, I got to meet the Sunshine Stitchers. I would I had seen them floating around the uh, the room and at the halls and I had gotten up to um, go refill my water bottle and as I was exiting the room who walks in but it's EJ and when I saw her I just stopped and I looked and she looked at me and we she does follow me we follow each other on um, Instagram but I wasn't sure if she was gonna know who I was but oh my gosh she is hilarious. I simply adore her. Um, what's so funny is we learned the, the, the few words to um, have Gary walk away because he was also in the hallway. And I turned to her and I asked her, how's Magical Stitches going? And he gave me a look and he just turned around and walked away. He is hilarious. Um, so I went over to their table where I also got to meet Shelia. Oh my gosh. And, um, they are just as funny as they are in their videos. Got my picture taken with them. And of course, um, there's a series of pictures, um, because, you know, goofing is happening. <laughs> I super enjoyed meeting them. After I did the shopping in the annex, Carmen had come in right before um, right before I was checking out. And she's like, the stitchy bus is leaving, are you coming? And I was like, well, it depends on how fast I get checked out. And Rachel was standing with me. And 
we got checked out. We got back into the ballroom, convention room, stitchy room, dropped stuff off. And I realized we had like three minutes before the bus left. So Rachel and I ran up there and we were the last two individuals on. And um, it was such an experience to ride the stitchy bus because it brought back middle school, high school memories. And um, yeah, the seat I chose had the hump. Um, if you've ridden a school bus, you know it's the wheel well hump in the back. And I, I sat in there when I was little, and sitting there as an adult, it's not as comfortable. Um, but it, it brought back memories. So one of my most memorable parts of going to Keepsakes is we pull up in front of Keepsakes, and we get off the bus, and who comes out of out of the store? We have Lenny, we have Jen, Spooneroonie, Stitcher, who welcomed us, greeted us. I believe we were the first bus to show up and they came running out. They said, yes, you must stop and take pictures in front of the, the keepsake sign. Um, it's, a, it's a must do. Um, they were a delight. And so once we did the um, pictures in front of the sign, we walked into the shop. And when you walk in, it's like, holy moly, we have landed in the world of cross stitch. It is an amazing store. All right, so my first experience of walking into keepsakes, I walk in, I'm looking around, I look up and I see a model hanging and I'm like, I have been looking for this pattern, patterns, and I heard stuff in my head. She said, if there's a model on the wall, then we have the patterns. So I turned to Jen, I said, hey, do you have all those patterns? And she was hilarious because she searched through the bins for me until we found every single pattern. Okay, so I came, that was the first thing that went into my basket. All right, so then I knew what I, I knew I wanted to find a um, memory piece. And basically what that is, is finding a cross-stitch pattern that was special or unique that I, or something I had never seen before in the store and fully kit it. So then when I stitch it, I will always remember my very first experience of going to my first retreat, going to this gorgeous um, cross-stitch store. Um, yeah, and then we'll always put a smile on my face. So I managed to find that on my very first day. All right, so what were my purchases? Well, I came, we all received these gingham bags, so I have three of them because I made three purchases. Um, one at the annex, keepsake shopping day one, and then I had keepsake shopping day two. All right, so what were the patterns, and I'm sorry for the crinkle crinkle, what were the patterns that I saw hanging that I had to have? It is Val Stuff Kitty Calendar. I first saw these patterns on Crafty Cat Stitcher's floss tube channel, Kathy. She was, in one of her videos, she was say, showing an old, old piece from the archives piece. And she had these all stitched together. And I'm like, oh, I need these in my life. And then I went on a hunt to find them and I could only find like one or two. Well, guess what guys? I have January, I have February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December. Aren't they adorable? On this visit, I found my memory piece. The pattern I found, I found it as a model, and I'm like, I have to have this, this is it. And it is Sunny Sunflower by Cherished Stitches. 
and it's made into this gorgeous drum. And what I love for the fact that this is my memory piece is not only is it sunflowers and I love sunflowers, it's by a designer I have never heard of. So that makes it even more mem memorable for me. All right. And it calls for six colors. They are silks. I have never heard of the silks. So I went upstairs to the amazing thread room and I began to pick silks off the walls that matched the pattern. All right. And I found, was I picked out silk and colors and I picked all five out um, and I liked them all except for this, the green and it was too variegated. So, and then they, the silk and colors did not have on the wall. They didn't have anything in stock showing of a less variegated green. So what did I do? I second guessed myself. I put everything back on the wall except for one color. And then I went and hunted down one of the volunteer staff members that I heard her earlier say to someone that needed help picking out threads, oh, this is my favorite thing to do. And so I found her. And I want to say her name is Kathy. I don't remember 100%, but she was a delight. And I showed her the one color that I kept in my hands, which is this gorgeous gold. And it's called Old Western Sun. It is gorgeous. All right. So we worked off of this. And then we moved into, I needed a lighter yellow. So then we went to the Belle Soise And she picked out cake, which is this really soft, pale yellow. All right. Then we picked out, we needed two browns, a lighter brown and a darker brown. So we picked out the lighter brown and then we, we went to the Needle Point Ink Silks. And she, we found Sable Brown Range. Really, really pretty. And this is used as a fill-in on the pattern. The darker brown we picked is also another Needlepoint Ink Silk, and it is Bunny Brown range. Really, really pretty. Then I needed a green, so we stayed in the Needlepoint needle point Ink Silks because we didn't find anything in the Belle Soise, and uh, we went with Forest Green range. Really, really pretty. All right, so all of these together make up make up the five colors that I needed okay so she had told me also to go down to the model and compare them to the model and because we were picking colors based on the picture you know when you take a picture of a model it never is not always the same color tones as what the model is and my colors are definitely deeper um, and a little bit more vibrant, and I'm very happy with them. All right, so then the last stop was to get fabric, and oh my goodness, it was so much fun. I can't remember who helped us, um, but he was fabulous. I had brought the model over with my, my floss, and um, we tried to find a, a fabric close to what the model was in. They didn't have exact, so we did, he just threw down different colors and let me put all my floss on top of each and every one until I picked one. And Carmen and Rachel helped me pick this one out. Um, this is a 32 count uh, linen. It is, I believe, an R&R, &R, and it's called Creek Bed Brown. And it has actually more brown in person than on the screen. But I think that these all look fabulous on it. And I'm super excited to start this. I wanted to start this two days ago. And I held off because I wanted to show it before I actually started it. So do not be surprised if I start this like tomorrow. All right. So that is purchases, purchase number one at Keepsakes. Oh, 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 oh. And I got the wool 
to um, to finish on the drum. And I um, my plan is that when I finish stitching it, I feel that this is a Vana Pfeiffer twisted stitcher worthy um, finishing piece. And I know she works off a wait list and I don't care how long it takes to get it back in my hands. It is worth it to me to send it to her because she is a fabulous finisher. And because this piece is so special to me, that will make it even more special to me. So that is my plan for finishing, but I have to stitch it first. So that was day one of Keeps Safe shopping. Just make sure it's empty. I forgot one other highlight of going to Keepsakes on the very first day. I was walking around upstairs going room to room and while there was air conditioned, they also had fans set up in most of the rooms because if you got two or three people in a room, it became extremely hot. And that morning, I decided to wear my hair down. I don't know what I was thinking. I did bring um, hair ties with me because I figured the humidity and the heat in Cincinnati is unbelievable. Uh, I thought New York was bad. So I walk into one of the back rooms. There is a fan going. I am standing there saying, oh my gosh, this feels so good. I'm so hot. And I'm holding my hair up and I'm just enjoying the breeze. And all of a sudden, someone goes to me, are you Deborah? And I looked at her and I said, yes, I am. And she told me that she watches my videos um, and that she loves my videos. And I immediately looked at her name tag and I, I said, Dawn, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Um, you made my morning because you know what? You, you made a comment about, um, you know, probably get recognized all the time. Um, you were the first person to recognize me. Besides Rachel on Thursday night, because she is a floss tuber and her and I comment on each other's videos, you are the first non floss tuber to have recognized me. And I, 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 it, it was an amazing experience. So thank you. I enjoy talking with you. I wish I had thought to take a picture with you. Um, you are so sweet. Be, made my morning and thank you Don for for approaching me and taking the time to to talk with me. All right, so after visiting Keepsakes, we headed back to the convention center, back to the stitchy room where I spent time stitching. I spent time going back to the freebie table. I spent time going to the um brag table and I did take video, a slow video uh, of the brag table because I really wanted to, one, remember everything that was there that was gorgeous, and two, I wanted to share it with you. Now, I'm going to insert that video um, here, but let me just put a disclaimer is that I videotaped it um, vertically simply because my intention was to take um, clips and put them on Instagram. They just never went on Instagram, so but they're gonna go here, and they are vertical. And if I realized I was just gonna put it in my video, I would have done it horizontally so you could see everything maybe a little bit better, wouldn't look so weird. But I'm gonna go ahead and insert that here.
enjoyed seeing those video clips. There were so many gorgeous, beautiful, finished pieces on that table. And things I had seen, the patterns, but never like basically a model that I looked at. And I'm like, I need that. I need that. Yes, I would stitch that now. So I am very impressed with all the talent we had sitting in that room. Um, everything was gorgeous and stunning. And like I said, you kept going up all weekend and something new would uh, pop up. Things that I thought were cute that popped up were um, if you had a finish while you were there at StitchCon, Pam and Steph brought their bell. You got to go up and ring the bell, hold up your piece, and some of those pieces made it to the brag table. And um, that is just fabulous. I tried really hard on Saturday night to finish my piece. Um, I, I brought six projects with me and I only stitched on one. And the one that was closest to a finish was my Think Spring. And I stitched on that until my heart was content and I just, I did not finish in time. Um, if I had stayed on Sunday, it probably would have been finished because it has since been finished. It took me two hours to finish it. I would have been able to ring the bell on Sunday, but that's okay. There's next year. I know next year, because that's right guys, I said next year I will be there. Um, I'm gonna bring something that I can finish relatively quickly and hopefully the bell will make another appearance and I can ring that bell. All right, so my final highlight of Friday night was meeting this lovely young lady that I had been looking forward to meeting. I knew she was gonna be there. And what's hilarious is five minutes before she came to my table, um, I was looking at her Instagram because she's not a floss tuber. I was looking at Instagram to see, is there a picture of her? Because I'm going to go find her. And she has a tiny picture. You can kind of make out her features. But because it's so tiny, you know how tiny it is on, on your phones. Um, I didn't think I'd be able to find her. She comes up to my table. And I look at her name badge. She says, Deborah, And I look at her name badge. And I say, oh my god, climbing the stitcher. And she is adorable. She was super excited that I knew who she was because, you know, she doesn't make videos. And she, she, as she told me, I recognize people, but they don't recognize me. And I'm like, how could I not know who she was? She is a faithful commenter on my channels. Um, she is also part of Magical Stitches. She is in a Hufflepuff house with me. Um, such a delight. I am so glad that she found me. Um, and we just had such a great time talking and getting to know each other. And we made plans to go to keepsakes together first thing on Saturday morning because she hadn't gone yet. And she thought I would be a great enabler. So yeah, so we made plans on Saturday to do that. So I loved meeting her and she was a highlight of my evening. So now we're into Saturday morning. Um, I tended to get into the stitchy room early in the morning. Um, and when I got there, I probably really got there between 8.30 and 9.00 a.m. There weren't a lot of stitchers in the room. So I took the opportunity to go up to Kyle, who was stitching in sound. Um, I did run into him, well, he ran into me uh, when I was standing in the annex line to pay for my purchases on Friday morning. And I was standing right by the door that went into the stitchy room. And he walked past me and he came back. And he says, Deborah, fancy meeting you here. Something like that. He recognized me. And um, I told him, I said, well, you know, your table is right next to mine. And he's like, well, why hadn't you come up to me before? And I said, because we was waiting for the right opportunity for you to walk past me because I knew it would happen because I had seen him constantly walking around, talking with people, people recognizing him, people coming up to his table. And I figured there would be an opportunity for either him to approach me or me to approach him um, when it was a little less chaotic. 
All right, so Saturday morning, I went up to Kyle. He was sitting at the table, and I was like, I'm going to help him with his Operation Meet 399. He and I chatted. We took a picture. I signed his book. Um, I asked him a, a very important stitchy question in regards to the Nora Corbett that I'm stitching, um, and I enjoyed our little chat, and I'm glad I came up to you and um, had the few moments together before it got all crazy again. So then, after I made it back to my table, um, they came in and announced that the Stitchy Butts was getting ready to leave for the first round to keepsakes. And um, Jaffe, who is the climbing, who's climbing Stitcher, um, I told you that we agreed to go to keepsakes together. Well, she was at her table. I saw that she had her stitching in her Q-snap, and she's like, let's go. And she, uh, her and I took off, and we got on the bus, and we had um, headed to keepsakes together, chatted all the way, looked at everything together, um, made multiple, I made multiple trips upstairs and downstairs, and... Um, yeah, I'm telling you, you could walk into that store and not see everything. Because when I went there the second time, there was so much more. And the funny thing is, is I was upstairs in one room, picked up some patterns. I had been in this room like four times. And I went back downstairs with everything I had in my hand. Found something else that I really wanted. So I decided, okay, let me put something back. That's right. I put something back. I went back upstairs to that room. I put the item back, and then there's a lovely volunteer in there um, sitting, waiting to help you, and she and I started talking, and as I'm standing there talking to her, I'm looking right at this display, and I see this pattern that I, I didn't see like the five other times or the four other times I went in there, and I snatched it up. So, yeah, I put a pattern back because I found another pattern downstairs, and then I came upstairs, and... Yeah, so it kind of like, I put something back just to make an equal change, basically. Um, but anyway, so I had a lovely time talking with uh, this volunteer. She was telling me um, that she hadn't stitched in quite some time, that she was kind of burnt out. So then her and I were talking, and I cannot remember her name, but I, I, I told her to start with something small and see if she could get that stitchy bug back. So hopefully she will do that. Um, but yes, so I had a fabulous time. I took a lot more pictures this time. So I'm going to go ahead and insert my shop pictures of the inside here. Isn't it gorgeous? I didn't get a picture of the thread room. I didn't get a picture of one of the other rooms. And I'm, yeah, it's, I'm happy that I got what I did because there were so many people in there. All right, so what did I purchase on this day? Because I have another little bag. All right, what came home with me? All right, so what did I purchase? Well, there are two items that I knew I wanted to get because um, on Friday night, Deb from Snug Harbor, Harbor Crafts had showed us at our table everything that she had purchased. And she had two items that I'm like, oh, I need them. Okay, so the first item is this Keepsakes Thread Keep. Isn't it cute? Adding it to my collection, I thought this was a great souvenir to bring home with me. So found this, took it home. All right, then the pattern that she showed that I said, yes, um, please, I searched high and low for it. And once I figured out how everything worked, when you found where the models were, say they were in the hallway, there's a basket at the end of the hallway that contains all those patterns. So I found the model, and then I pawed through the basket to find the pattern. And it is Art to Heart, and it's called Bloom. And again, another designer I've never heard of, but this is just stunning. It's gorgeous stitched up. It comes with all the buttons. So I had to have this because it's just way too pretty and way too happy not to come home with me. All right. 
So then as I'm perusing the racks, the bins, the baskets, walking around with Jaffe, we're talking, we're looking for things, picking things up, I found Summer at Cherry Hill. It's a Brenda Gervais. Um, someone is stitching this. I can't remember who, but I saw it and I fell in love with it. And then I went on a search for it. One, two, three stitch didn't have it, but Cape Six had it. So that came home with me. Then, of course, this had to come home because cats. It is a Val's stuff and it is called What a Wonderful World. Super cute. It comes with the button. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Then, I had seen this pattern online, um, never purchased it. I saw the model of it and that cinched it for me. And it is by The Work Basket and it is Quaker Cat and Mouse. Gorgeous. This was the model that I saw. So I said, yes, please. All right. Then remember when I said I went upstairs to put a pattern back and I found another pattern? that I never saw before? Well, this is it. And I saw it and I thought of my sister because she was looking for this pattern, but guess what? She found the pattern, she already has it in her possession, so now it's mine. And it is by Blackbird Designs, hats off to Uncle Sam. Isn't it pretty? Yep, so now it's mine. What's well, gonna be from my sister, but that's okay. She ended up purchasing the kit with um, the fabric. So, love it. And then I originally picked this up and I did put this back. I think this was the pattern that I was going to put back. And then I was, when I was in the room chatting with this lovely lady, Jaffe comes in and she's like, oh, there you are. And so I was in the process of putting this pattern back and I told her, I said, yeah, I thought it would complement um, this one piece that I stitched. I said, but, you know, I can get it later. I don't have to have it. And then she said these words to me after I put it back on the shelf. It was the last one also. She said, do you know, that pattern's part of a series. And they've already discontinued or retired the first one in the series. I'm just saying. So then I walked back over and picked it up. It is Blackbird Designs. It is the third in the Magical Mystery Tour series. Yeah. I wasn't taking any chances because I do like this. And um, I thought it would be a great monochromatic complimentary piece to my Lizzie Kate I Can Drive a Stick. Totally different designers, but you know, they're both Halloween-ish esque. Well, one is, but this one kind of is. I think simply because of the colors. So that is everything I purchased from Keepsakes. I, I came with a certain budget and I did not go over that budget and I'm pretty happy about that. All right, so then we got back to Keepsakes and Jaffe and I sat and stitched the majority of the afternoon together and it was a delight to sit with her, talk with her, connect with her. And then it was time for my smalls exchange because I was on four o'clock Saturday afternoon, the very last smalls exchange um, that was happening. And um, I did take a picture of the table before we all selected which ones we were going to, to pick. And I'll insert that here. I believe there probably were a hundred chips per color. Now, not everyone brought um, a small to exchange, so not every number got called. I was number eighty-four, so I was towards the end of um, being called, and I had looked at the table prior to anyone selecting anything, and I was trying to figure out how I was going to choose my small. And there were several pink bags on the table. And I just said, I'm going to pick a pink bag. If there's a pink bag that's left, that's going to be the one I choose. So when I, my number was called, there was probably six bags left on the table. 
and then my eyes zeroed in on one bag. This is the bag. And as you can see, it's multicolored, but there are pink stripes in it. There's a dark pink and a light pink. So I said, this is going to be, for me, whatever is inside is based on the color pink. All right. <clears throat> when I opened this, I was like, oh, this was meant for me. It's like whoever stitched this knew who I was, was in my brain, knew exactly what would be perfect for me. So the first little goodies that were in there were some DMC. Two different shades of yellow and an orange. Really pretty. I'm like, ooh, this probably has something to do with what's inside. All right, but you never know. Then there was this wonderful Tuft Woolens Blueberry lam uh, Lemonade. This is a hand bomb. All right, I know all about this because I'm a knitter and I own some of this, not this flavor, but this stuff, wonderful. So then I pull out the small and it's in this beautiful mint green tissue and I'm digging through, digging through and I was like, what is it, what is it? And I open it up and this is what is inside. This gorgeous stitched strawberry there's a bee this gorgeous sunflower there's another bee there's another bee look at this top guys she trimmed this wool down and put this huge little button wooden button on top she put in these sunflower pins guys her stitching is gorgeous i love it love it love it this was like perfect and um what was so funny is jaffe pointed out to me i'm pretty sure it was jaffe she's like oh, what did you buy as your memory piece my memory piece is sunflowers and then the small i pick is sunflowers absolutely stunning so after you go through the smalls exchange after everyone's picked their bag um you then go back over to the corner and you try to find the person that stitched for you. And I'm like, how am I going to find this person? Because there was no card inside. But she spotted me walking around with this before I had to worry. And um, I, she told me she forgot to put the card in. And I told her how perfect this was for me. And the funny thing is, is when she was telling me about the tough woolens, I'm like, yes, I'm in order too. And she's like, it was like fate that I was meant to get her gorgeous, gorgeous piece. And here is the picture of her and I together. So thank you, Robin. You probably do not watch my channel. Um, I did hunt you down in the StitchCon group and found you on Instagram. I hope you don't mind that I, I just wanted to get to know you more. So I found you. Um, I love it. I will cherish it forever. So what did I finish? I took a video of it Saturday morning before I took it downstairs and before I could give it away um, because I didn't. I didn't get a chance to do to take um, any pictures or video of it prior to leaving. So I'm going to go ahead and insert the video of what I made here. Good morning, everyone. Today is Saturday, June 29th. It is my last day here at last full day here at StitchCon. Um, today is the second full day. I've been here a day and a half already and having so much fun. But today is my smalls exchange um, at 4 p.m. and I thought I would share a little video with you of what I completed since I hadn't had a chance to show it to you before I left. So what I have here is this four by six box that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. And this came from Hobby Lobby too, this little decor flower piece. They're all wood, and what I did um, was, it was all natural wood, so I, my lovely husband did this for me. He spray painted it with, uh, for me. And he used um, Rust-Oleum Heirloom White paint for me. All right, so um, I've decorated the top of the box. This is just some sticky board 
it's acid free I just covered it in this beautiful um, olive green fabric and a little bit of a dark evergreen um, ribbon running underneath it and then I just adhered this little medall flower medallion on top all right so when you open up the box this is what's inside now I have some threads that are gonna go here all right so this is it this box is actually for a deck of cards and um, I knew from the very beginning that I was going to want to put my small in here and so that's why I've done 28 count one over one on it originally I was going to do 40 count but when I it arrived I could not see the holes. The weave was way too tight. So I had to do some quick thinking to see what could I make work. And this is how it worked out for me. So what I did up here is I just took some scrap looking paper that I had and cut it in half and just adhered it in here. All right. And then I have um, some threads that I just, I decided the last minute that I wanted to put up here and um, if I had really thought the process through, because I did rush, it took me the last three nights before I came here um, to figure out how I wanted to really finish. Because you know, when you go to fully finish things, you have a grand idea in your head. And then when you come to make it happen, it doesn't go according to plan. Um, but if I had thought and had more time, I would have made some pockets up here and I would have put the threads on this side and then something else over here. But that's okay. It is what it is. Um, I love it. So first of all, let's go over here. This is a pin keep that I made. I used the same olive green fabric. I wrapped it around a piece of sticky board, um, but I put a couple of layers of cotton batting on top of it just to give it some little fluff. And then I um, had some pink felt that I cut into a rectangle and I took it to my sewing machine and did a little decorative zigzag edge around it. However, I did sew it onto the green fabric. So it's not glued down. And then we have the evergreen ribbon again. And then I had this beautiful floral ribbon that I also got from Hobby Lobby. This is what helped me pick my color palette. I absolutely love the greens, blues, and reds together. This is a little deep red in there. All right, and then I just put three floral poutini poutini um, pins in there, counting pins, and then I put in here, um, these are Pat Carson's favorite needles, and they're all three sizes. So I just put them in here too. All right, and this is glued in. You cannot pull this out. All right, over here, this is my small. This is how it turned out. Um, originally, I was going to have it glued in. And before I decided, before I actually did the gluing down, um, I decided I wanted to decorate it up a little bit. So I put this little ribbon tab up here, right? And I figured, okay, well, people see that they're gonna want to pull it out right so I don't want them tugging 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 and um, maybe pulling the ribbon free even though I use some super duper I use Eileen's tacky glue um, I use some double-sided uh, adhesive framing tape uh, so everything's in there really secure so well, I just decided to go ahead and make it to where you could pull it out okay and I'm gonna come over to the light here so maybe you can see it a little better um, but yeah, this is how it turned out. It just fits. It is two and a half inches wide and three and three quarters inches tall. Um, I absolutely love it. This is on 28 count um, Joblin in time. And the thread is a Victorian motto uh, thread color in Victorian pine. And I just love how it turned out, all right? So um, I, I put this together thinking I was going to hear it in, so I didn't really think too much about how I was doing the back. And then when I decided that I wanted to make it a pullout, I said, okay, what can I do? Well, as you see, I had um, some 
very, uh, like adhesive archival mat board cut down, which I had originally used as just the backing for this. Well, what I did is I attached another piece because then I decided to put the pull tab in, right? So I put another piece in just to, to sandwich those two together. But then it was just a plain white back. So what I did is I copied the pink felt from my pink heap and I just took this to the sewing machine and zigzagged around and then I glued it down onto the back of the mat board um, with Eileen's tacky glue. Now if I had thought this through really thoroughly and didn't do this at the last minute trying to figure out how to make this come together, I would have definitely done my back differently. I would have probably done like a the twisted stitch or a Vanna Pfeiffer style and I would have wrapped the green fabric I had around my mat board, sandwiched it together, um, and made it look a little nicer. But I still think it turned out well. And you know what? This is my very first time FFOing a project that's not in a frame. And I'm really, really proud of how it turned out. I love it. Um, I, I did the best that I could. And you know what? It's a little, got little issues, but who cares, right? If I received this, I would love it, and I hope whoever receives it loves it too. Um, super happy about this, but yeah. So this goes in here like that, all right? And then the thread colors I have here, as I went through my stash, and I was like, okay, let's pick out three complementary colors. And the first one is, it's a color in cotton, and it is carmine. So I went ahead and I, I'm a scrapbooker, so I have some dyes, and I did my own little thread keeps, and I put that floss in there, okay? And then the next one is another color of cotton, and this one is ivy. It's a really pretty variegated um, green. And then I went to my Victorian Motto Shop, col sample shop colors, and this is the color Soulmates. Absolutely gorgeous variegated pink, and I thought these three colors complemented this really really well okay so then yeah i will just fold them up a little bit they will go up there sorry for the little wonkiness here i will fix them to make them look a little neater before i give it um but then you close it right you clasp it and then you turn it over and i have this pocket this is an adhesive pocket um, that I had for in my scrapbooking supplies. I cut down some cardstock um, that matched the green colors and corner rounded the edges and just adhered it. And then I put the information on this cute little library card. And I took this idea from Amy Brooke. I saw that she was using library cards as project cards. And I thought, oh, that's so smart. And Instead of um, actually having a card floating around with all the information on it and who made it, I went ahead and put it on this card and you can put it in here. So you can see I put the designer name, the pattern name, the fabric I used, the thread I used, that who stitched it and what, what it was stitched for. So that way this card is always with the project, right? I like that. So I, I, I hope whoever receives that likes that too. All right, so there, this is my small for the small exchange today. And um, we are, I'm in the red group, so I'm in the last group today. Um, so my exchange is at four o'clock. And um, I hope whoever receives it loves it as much as I do. Okay, guys, thank you. And I'm going to go ahead and um, get ready for day three of StitchCon. I'll talk to you later. Bye. I was very frantic over finishing this. I wanted it to be, um, I had this vision in my head and I wanted it to be something that whoever received it loved it as much as I did. And when I saw Colleen walking around with what I made, I went up to her and she told me that she absolutely loved it. And why I stressed over, um, again, here's the word stress. I stressed over whether or not the person who received it would enjoy it as much as I did and she absolutely does so I'm so glad Colleen um loves it and I also stalked her down on um 
on the SitchCon Facebook group and found her on Instagram and we are now friends on Instagram. So I'm super excited to continue seeing what she, um, what she makes. So yeah, that was um, the Smalls Exchange. Um, it was a fantastic experience. I highly recommend that if you go to retreat and have the opportunity to participate, um, do it. If it's your first retreat, just do it. Don't worry about whether or not someone's going to like what you make because you know what? It is special and whoever receives it will love it as much as you do. All right, so what are some of um, my other memories from the week, uh, the, the four days, three days I was there? Um, I have this wonderful memory of Deb Snug Parker Crafts. She was sitting at our table, and she is an amazing individual. Um, very easy to talk to. You love her the moment you see her. Um, and what I loved about her is that she was on a mission to talk to as many people as possible. She flitted in and out from our table throughout the day and the evening. And um, I remember very early on Friday, I asked her, I said, have you stitched at all? And her response was no. Then Friday evening, she magically appeared at our table and I looked over and she was stitching. I documented it. I put it on Instagram. Her daughter thought to her daughter, Kef, thought it was hilarious. Um, but I had to document her actually sitting and stitching. She managed to put 10 stitches in and then she was off again. Um, and then on Saturday night when we were sitting, she came back. She was stitching some more and she had a finish. Not a finish to ring the bell. But she finished what she, uh, oh, the watering can on her piece. And I thought that was pretty um, pretty important because she, her mission was to talk to so many people and really have heart-to-heart -heart conversations with people. So the fact that she able to finish 40, 50 stitch, 60 stitch little watering can, I was impressed. So that is um, a good memory I have uh, uh, from her and... Um, she, she, if you ever get the opportunity to meet her, definitely sit down and, and talk with her. She, she's, um, she's amazing. And she really, really cares. She really wants to um, get to know you and learn more about you. And we had some great conversations on our, on our last night uh, together at our table. Also, um, Kat, she is part of the, she's one of the headmistresses in the School of Magical Stitches. And she arranged for all attendees that were there that participate in the School of Magical Stitches and Literature to do a group photo together. We grouped ourselves by house and we um, met out on the steps leading into the convention room or the stitching room and took a, a, a group picture together. Um, that was a lot of fun. Because I was not uh, coming back on Sunday morning, I was able to... Um, there is a make and take that uh, Barbara gives out to every attendee, and um, I was able to get mine prior to um, heading back up to my room Saturday night, and she said it can be a take and make, and this is what it is, and I managed to make mine right before I sat down and made this video. It is this little, you can use it as a scissor fob or attach it to a zipper of a project bag, but what we have is the 2019 charm, and then we have a school bus charm because the stitchy bus, and then we have this cute little, there were different colors. I chose the reddish pink one, so uh, super happy to have this little memento also. There were people doing needle miter exchanges and I did not make any, um, but I did come home with um, some needle minders. Um, uh, pe people who made them were very generous to share with those of us who, who did not make them. Um, so then I, table next to me was the lovely Kia and her husband, Nathan. And she asked me, when I was uh, standing there talking with her and looking at her, what she was stitching, she asked me if I would like a needle minder. So I came home with this cute needle minder and this adorable bee on the back. And I loved speaking with her 
And I thought she had fabulous hair. I never told her that, but she has fabulous hair. And I was speaking with her husband because he was sitting there stitching. And I had asked him how long he had been stitching. And he told me since April. And I said, April of this year? And he said, yes. And his stitching, what he's working on is absolutely amazing for someone who's only been stitching since April. I love the story behind uh, why he started stitching. Um, and I did ask him if he participated in the Smalls Exchange, and his response to me was, you can't come to a party without a gift. Love them. Abby, top knot stitcher, came around, was giving away some of her needle minders, and of course, I took the pink kitty. And then I have one more needle minder. Um, my table mate, Bev, um, I came to the table and this was magically in my spot and I'm like, Oh, what is this? And it was a little something that she gave and it's this adorable, gorgeous acorn needle minder. Love it. Thank you, Bev. When I purchased the freebie table, when I first got there on Thursday on the side table where they ended up putting, um, more of the, uh, brag table items, these were sitting there in little plastic pouches and we were trying to figure out, are they free or what are they? And I can't remember who told me that they eventually found out they were free to take. Maybe it was Carmen who told me, I'm not 100% sure. So what I picked was this gorgeous red scissor fob and it has a cupcake. Oh, the sun. The sun is shining in this gorgeous little cupcake. I do not know who made these. There were no, I don't think there were any cards. Maybe there was a card, um, but it, it got separated. I don't know, but these, this was very kind and generous of whoever made these. And I love this. And again, it's another piece that's gonna bring back good memories from my experience there. Some mornings you come in and you find something sitting at your table. Like one morning, there was a chocolate chip cookie in my seat. And that was courtesy of a loss and floss. Barb and Leanne, and it was delicious. Sometimes you'd come in and there would be, um, people were made, had made business cards or calling cards. So I have a few, I have a few, I have a few, I have a few, all right? Lindsay, I met Lindsay at Needleworkers Delight. It was so cute to see her again. Um, so I did not have anything to give out, but next year I will. Um, I think it's a great item to get you to go around to all the tables and meet people, right? It doesn't hurt. It's a good conversation starter, right? Uh, Katie Clark, who's the nap time stitcher, she came around and she was giving away these cross stitching stickers. Um, you can use them in your planner. You can use them in your traveler's notebook. Super, super cute. She's, I think she has or will be opening an Etsy store. So I thought these were a really cute memento to, um, I'm a scrapbooker and I am going to scrapbook my experience. So these will go in it. This lovely little box, Deb Sub Snug Harbor Crafts. She was going around leaving these for people. Um, as you can see, Deb, I have not opened mine. I know there's chocolate in there. I know, because I saw someone who opened it. But I was waiting to show this prior to consuming what's inside because it's super, super creative. And I love Deb. Debbie, sorry. Debbie um, is a scrapbooker just like me. Love it. I had mentioned that I had the opportunity to sit and talk with Leslie Lafleur, who is uh, under sea, under the sea fabrics. I took my StitchCon passport up to her, got her sticker, and um, when you went and spoke with her, you were able to put your hand in this bag and pull out a colored chip, and the colored chip de determined what item she gave you, and she gave you a little little gift, which I thought was super, super generous. And I picked out, um, there's a free pattern in here, I'm not gonna show it. Um, there is a magnet of her business card, and inside is this thread key. I'm getting a nice collection of thread keeps now. Super cute, super cute. I know um, someone else who had gotten um, a corner gauge. So you never, 
never know what you're going to pick out. And that was just, again, really generous of her. Um, and I enjoyed talking with her about um, her fabric club. I told her I was a member and she took my suggestion of um, a fabric color that I would like to see and maybe she'll make it happen. And um, what I really appreciate about her was that she took comments, feedback. And because, you know, she was telling me everything she dyes is not her colors would not be for her. And I told her I appreciated that because I know some individuals, um, being a knitter, there are some indie dyers who will only dye colors that they like. So in my opinion, that limits your market. And maybe that's what you want. But she's very open to suggestions. She's not even had people help her name her fabrics. Um, so she's just a sweetheart. And I look forward to hopefully seeing her again next year. And we had Stephanie, who is Lindy Stitches. Um, she was also sitting at the table across from me, um, but she was coming around and she was giving everyone this postcard of a, this cute little free adorable turtle pattern. Absolutely cute. I enjoyed talking with her and letting her know that um, I really loved her use of color and her patterns. And she seemed to have really appreciated um, that comment. That is everything I have to show. Many beautiful speeches. There were uh, raffles, there were giveaways, um, there were some heartfelt stories. Um, it's just I was moved to tears at least twice. Um, it was just the most magical, memorable, beautiful experience that I've been able to have um, in in the cross stitching community. On my way out, I was able to speak to Barbara and I wanted her to know how much I appreciated her event. Um, let her know how I was feeling coming into this retreat and how I felt leaving this retreat. And I, she's a wonderful person. She gave me a great big hug and um, yeah, I want to thank everyone. I want to thank Barbara, her family, her children who were working there, Pam, Steph, Nicole, Lenny, Jen, um, Sue Hillis, uh, just everybody. It is a phenomenal event. And yes, I was apprehensive to go. I was scared to go. Again, when I put myself on the waiting list, I thought I wouldn't be getting in until 2020. Um, and I'm so glad that I put my anxiety and fear um, aside and went. And my goal was to just have a fabulous time. And that's what I did. And I would highly encourage you that if you think you want to attend something like this, even if you're scared, um, do it. Get on the wait list. Um, they did announce next year's dates are June, June 11th through the 14th. I believe Steph said in her, um, her, her video today, I only started watching the beginning, she did announce that the wait list will open, I believe, in August. And get your name on there because I didn't think I was going to get off. And there are people currently on the waiting list that didn't get off uh, for this this year. Um, but I got off the waiting list. So that is it, everyone. I just had a fabulous time. And I told my husband that when I got off the wait list for this year that I just wanted to go once. And now that I've gone, I'm like, I'm ready for 2020. Put me down. Sign me up. And when I get my invoice in September or October, I will not hesitate to uh to pay it because i want to be there i a wonderful experience do not be afraid to go sign yourself up get on the wait list and come and have the most amazing time all right so i'm gonna go ahead and insert any pictures that i didn't put out throughout the video uh, i'm gonna insert that now so um until next time guys uh thank you for bearing with me on this recap it was a fabulous Fabulous, amazing experience. Okay, guys, talk to you later. Bye.